Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be the next Philadelphia Phillies baseball episode here from Sports Fanatic News as we talk about the Phillies adding another reliever in a small move, Johan Lopez, who did have a very good start to his career for the Diamondbacks, then fell off in the last two years, and also, of course, re-signing the big kahuna that has a chance to be our future closer in the pen in Sir Anthony Dominguez. But let's start, we'll start with the smaller move first. They were able to get Lopez from the or from the Atlanta Braves since they were able to get them from the Diamondbacks, and then they consequently from making a lot of the moves they made in the offseason had to then get rid of Lopez. But when it comes to Lopez, he's similarly to Emmanuel, who we also were able to get, of course, Ken Emmanuel from the Astros, the lefty, how I talked about, unlike Nick Nelson and Sheriff and the other guys who picked up Jose Alvarado last year. Um, he doesn't have as much of the control issues because if you look at him, he has in his best season where he pitched 70 games and had 21 holds, so that's really good, in 60 innings pitched, had only in the teens uh, base balls and had 42 strikeouts and a 232 average against. So he pitched really well in 2019 and then had a great 10-game cup of coffee the season before. For him, it's just been... The last couple seasons in 2020, he only pitched in 20 games, and then last year he only pitched in 13. Uh, he hasn't been as consistent, but he also, for most of his minor league career, has been consistent to pitch to a 3.59, but also has consistently, when you look at his walks, um, had in his best seasons down there only in the teens or 10 walks, where then in his off seasons down there, yeah, he did have walk issues with 32 and 26, but in the teens and his best season in the MLB, if you can get that out of Lopez, when he's locked in, he's not really like Hector, who even when locked in at times would still walk a couple people and then get out of it, but I, even though, like I talked about in the video I did on Hector, I still really like what Hector was able to do overall, but or somebody like a guy like Diekman, who obviously is a very good addition if the Phillies make that addition, but even he will walk people and then just work his way out of the inning at times. If you look at Lopez's best seasons, he had a couple off seasons with 30-something walks, but best seasons are the 10 walks, the 15 walks when he's locked in, and then the 17 walks in the MLB when he pitched really well in that 70-game season. So if you can have with this new development, team here, he does still have minor league options, the guys that you're bringing in to kind of change the tide of an absolute dog trash development system we had going for a decade here, then if that can kind of start working with these small claims you made, that would be good, but now it's time to make the bigger moves like Corey Knebel, Mark Melanson is a guy, I know he's not the sexiest name, but look at his career numbers, he's been a steady Eddie, got it done each year, and is the opposite of most people, where most people, when they haven't been closers all the time consistently, don't do the best in the role. He does step up to the plate nine times out of ten, if you will, um, or 90% of the time, whatever you prefer to how to say it. And he does well in those roles like he did last year and also did years ago, which I believe was with the Pirates when he had like a 50-something um, save season. But he he's definitely a guy and a name that I would go for. But, of course, other than um, the move to uh, – get Johan Lopez, the Phillies were able to avoid arbitration with Sir Anthony Dominguez, who just, we know, can be an absolute menace on the mound, even when he was going through his injury bugaboo stuff in 2019 before he came out, uh, he still pitched to a 4.01 and still showed good signs of things, he just, we found out obviously was working through things, and then now is coming off the injury, pitched in one game last year, but he started showing the light show when he came back in the minors and was showing the good zip on that fastball and now having a whole off season, very wise move by the Phillies to be able to keep him and lock him up because as I said at the beginning of this video, he very likely is the guy that you're looking to to be your future closer once you bring in a Melanson, a Corey Knebel, whoever you decide to put in that back role this year or you trade for Craig Kimbrell, you are going to have to have somebody that's the future crop because none of those guys, except for maybe Knebel, since he's only 30, younger than the other crop guys, that you're going to get where Melanson is in his mid-30s, and then obviously so is Kimbrel. So you're going to have to have guys that you have pegged as the future closer, and I think that definitely is Sir Anthony Dominguez, but the Phillies obviously don't see him as that yet because they're rumored to get guys that all would fit into the closer role in Corey Knebel and also have the rumor to get Craig Kimbrel. But... And it's also rightfully so, because he's coming off of an injury. You don't want to put that pressure on the kid. He's still only going to be 27 
uh, next season and has a chance to be a hell of a reliever for this team and be the closer by the time um, he's 28 or 29 years old for this team if he really does pitch well in that setup wall. And then Lopez was a solid and smart pickup as well. And then, of course, our Phillies tendered all the people you would expect them to tender, uh, tendering contracts to Jose Alvarado, Zach Eflin, and Reese Hoskins, as expected. Obviously, we saw last year when Haas went out of the lineup, he, how big of an impact he really does make for people that doubted that going into his injury. And then Zach Eflin's a guy, he pitches well other than the season we had. Let's have everyone pitch up in the zone for some damn reason, but he pitches well other than that season where Zach Eflin um, is able to get it done when he just has it going and his knees are healthy. So hopefully that can happen next year, but you expected him to stay around. And then also Jose Alvarado, obviously when you were able to pick him up, he was just blah last year. He was having times where you showed the flashes of stuff that he has the great stuff, but he obviously is control, control, control. So if he can lock that down more this year, maybe we can see it more, but uh, we have to see it first because the only time he's really been lights out was the beginning of his career at Tampa Bay, and then you started really seeing when the league caught up to him, he didn't really tune it back into being that dominant since. But you knew they were going to keep all these guys, and it's something that was definitely expected of the Philadelphia Phillies um, to keep all these guys, and those are very good moves to tender those guys. Now we're going to see if they can avoid arbitration just like they did with Sir Anthony Dominguez. With these guys who will get paid 7275, that's what Dominguez is going to get. And we'll see if the Phillies can avoid arbitration with guys like Hoskins, guys like Eflin, and also Jose Alvarado, or if they will have to go to the arbiter. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been the latest Sports Night News Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Hope you're all doing well, and hopefully we will be doing much better after tonight if the Phillies get Corey Knebel, Kyle Schwarber, or even, like I said, a good steady Eddie pitcher in Mark Melanson, or even bring back Jake Diekman from the left side. He's still been very good. He's been steady. Yes, he does sometimes get into the walk issues, but look at his career numbers. He's been a very solid pitcher for multiple teams. So peace out, everybody, and stay safe.